Working with Excel sometimes involves using dates and times. And if you think of them as actual numeric entries, and you might not at first, they're going to be much more powerful. As a general rule, entering dates means storing numerical information. Now, in other parts of the course, you will see formulas here and there that work with Excel dates and times. And in other courses, you'll see that there are many functions involving dates and times. There are functions that allow you to find the number of working days between dates, also isolating day of the week. The standard way to enter a date is to use either slashes or hyphens. So for example, if I want to put in May 5th of 2013, five slash five slash 13, there's January 8th of 2013. Hyphens work the same way, but the display will still come out with slashes. So if I want to put in June 7th, 6 7 13, we can type it that way. The entry goes here. And by the way, the date system is designed to handle information until the year 10,000. So we're pretty much in shape there. Recognize one oddity that could get in the way of smooth functioning of Excel. If you happen to be working with data that involve birth dates around, say, 1930, this will throw you. I'm going to type a date. Imagine you're working with Social Security data or retirement data. And here's a birth date of December 21st. And you might type it 30 for 1930. Press Enter. And that's what you see, 1930. How about someone born one year before? 12 slash 21 slash 29, 1929. Excel displays it as 2029. Now, it might be unusual for some people, but just be aware of the settings in Excel. Eventually, they will change this. But date entries, you want to make it as fast as possible. Type two-digit years. But if you're ever dealing with data around this time frame, you have to remember the following. All yearly entries that are typed from 30 through 99 are automatically in the previous century, 20th century, and all entries between zero and 29 are automatically this century. And of course, you can override this by typing four digit years. But when you type yearly entries with slashes or hyphens, that's the best way to do it. You do set the stage for using this information with Excel date functions and possibly time functions as well. If you're typing time entries, you can use the so-called 24-hour style or this style or this style. Recognize as you type an entry, for example, like this one, look in the formula bar to get a read on how that's being entered. If you type 1 colon 32, you might be thinking afternoon, but that's an AM date. If you're typing an entry like this, that's the 24-hour style. Of course, that means 4.43 p.m. You see it in the formula bar. So there are many things you can do with these, but get down the basic idea that if you enter the information this way, there is a potential use of this information down the road for calculating differences between times and differences between dates. It's a powerful feature in Excel and something you want to keep an eye on.